So here are the first 18 lines of Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales. And I know this probably looks funny to you. This is written in Middle English, and I wouldn't make you read it yourself. But I wanted you to see it so you'd have an idea of the language spoken by the common people during Chaucer's time. It looks a lot like our own English, but I know there are words that you won't recognize. What I think is interesting about this is that Chaucer writes this series of tales sort of as a frame tale. The storyline is that all these people have gotten together. They're going to go on a pilgrimage to Canterbury. It was something that people did, and he talks about they did it in the spring. And this opening set of lines reflects perfectly the great chain of being that people believed in. He gets radical later on, but in this, in his opening, maybe the stuff that the authorities would look at first? Who knows? In this, he's very traditional. He starts with nature. Nature is sort of at the bottom of the totem pole and gradually starts this works its way up. Not because nature is weak, he doesn't think that, but it's just one of those background things to the world. So simple April, this is April, the month, just like you're used to. Um, showers, like spring showers. Um, these things are at the root of things. Let me read you how this says then, this first step on our chain of being. One that April with his shore is sota, the drought of March hath passed to the rota, and by that every vein and switch liqueur, of which vertu engendred is the fleur. I'm going to stop here. This is flower, like a daisy or a rose. He's moving up a step in this great chain of being, from the things that are not living, the April showers, which are very sweet, by the way, sota is sweet, and these have pierced the drought of March, all the way down to the root, the rota, and this water has bathed every vein of those flowers in such liquor, such wonderful liquid, of which absolutely engendered or created is the flower moving up here we have one more little um unliving thing zephyrus the east wind it comes in softly when zephyrus echo with his sweat a breath in spirit hath in every halt and hith the tundra croppers suddenly here come our crops our plants are growing and the youngest son half in the rum has half a course rona. Spring is really coming. This is an astrological reference. The sun is halfway through the ram. It's really getting into spring. And then here come the birds. They're another step up. We have the plants, so inanimate, doesn't really move life forms. Another step up to the small fowlers, the little birdies. And small of fowlers mock and melodeia. Can you just hear them? Tweet, 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 tweet. <laughs> they slip in all the nicked with open air. They sleep all night with their eyes open. You know why? Because so pricketh him nature in her courages. And that means nature has been poking them so much in their hearts that they're so excited that they sleep all night with their eyes open. They don't really sleep. They're too excited. So when nature's all excited, suddenly we move, we move a big step up this chain of being. People get excited too. First of all, just regular people, folk. Then longing folk to go on pilgrimages. Our regular folk want to get out and do something. And what's a safe way? What's a socially acceptable thing to do to get out and play in the springtime? A pilgrimage. Absolutely. And palmerus, for to second strongest, strongest. Some more of these people. We're looking for strange lands, some adventure. But again, socially acceptable adventure. Okay. To furnish hallways. Couth and sundry landes, things that are known in all these other sundry or varied lands. 
and especially, especially from every sheer resenda, from the backside of beyond, places like where I'm from, the ends of the shires of the counties of England, of Angoland, to Canterbury they wend, they go to Canterbury, especially from all the little places and the little shires in England, all these pilgrims are going to go to Canterbury, it's a big deal, big pilgrimage. And why? One more step up the chain of being. Better than regular people? Obviously, the saints, the martyrs, right? They're going to go to seek the holy, blissful martyr for to sake because he's helped them when they're sick. That harm hath holpen, one that they were sake. 